What is up, all of you awesome maker people? You might be noticing there's something a little bit different about me. I've got some stylish new shades on. And no, these aren't fresh from the runways of Paris. These are laser safety glasses. And that's because this week we're playing with lasers. This totally rad machine sitting in front of me is the Longer Ray 5, a 400 millimeter by 400 millimeter 10 watt laser engraver. And this machine was provided to me for free for the purpose of making this video. So this is not a review, more of an overview, and I'll share some thoughts and opinions, but please rest assured that every opinion stated in this video is going to be 100% my own. For starters, like I said, this machine can engrave an area of 400 by 400 millimeters. So you can do some pretty large engraving projects. And I know what you might be thinking, you've heard the term laser cutter a lot. I would not classify this as a laser cutter. Being a 10 watt machine, you can cut some pretty thin ply and dark colored acrylic. This is a diode laser, not a CO2 laser. A CO2 laser is going to be what you need if you want to be cutting clear acrylic and some thicker, stronger materials. But a 10 watt diode laser is more than sufficient for a lot of really fun projects. Having a machine like this, a laser engraver, is a surefire way to level up your projects. Whether you want to add your maker mark or some personalization to a cutting board that you've made, diode lasers are great for that. If you want to mark on painted steel or make your own custom frosted glass, those are all things that you can do. You can cut some thin ply for all sorts of fun little projects. A machine like this would be a really good choice for something like that. What it's not going to be great for is if you want to cut this inch thick piece of hard wood but you can engrave on it. Let's dive in and talk a little bit more about the machine. On the Ray 5, Longer is including a nice big build volume, an ultra precise laser spot, onboard wireless, and a touchscreen right here. Now, I know you've heard me say before that I don't care about touchscreens on 3D printers, which is absolutely the truth. However, on a machine like this, I do find having a screen of any variety to be useful. And that's because my Xtool D1 does not have a screen. The only way that I can interface with that machine is by using their app or through the computer. I have no way of controlling anything, which also means that there is no true offline usage. I can't put an SD card in that printer or engraver and let it run. And I can do that on the Ray 5. There is a micro SD card slot built into the screen right in here. Personally, I do for the most part prefer to run tethered with a standard USB Type-B cable, but it's nice to have options. Speaking of options, there's also onboard wireless, which I haven't tested yet, but that'll be coming. On the Ray 5, Longer also includes a handful of safety features. The machine does have a fire detection built in, something that my X-Tool doesn't have. It also has a gyro safety. So basically, if I knock the machine around while it's operating, it'll stop running. Love that. They're also claiming the plexiglass shield is fireproof, which is something else that's super smart. And as another built-in protection to keep the machine safe, it can also detect if it has stopped moving. So it's getting feedback on the stepper motors, and if it's trying to run and it's colliding with something, it will stop moving. That's amazing, so you don't just have a laser continuing to fire in one spot and potentially leading to a fire. On the subject of safety features, when it comes to using something like a laser engraver, you need to take some things into account. When the machine is running, there is no if, and, or, but, and you don't have a good reason outside of this thing is in an enclosure to not wear your super style of shades. Don't use it in an area with flammable products sitting around, like my gas can. Make sure that you're utilizing this in a well-ventilated area. Because they're not enclosed, I don't use my lasers in my normal workshop. I'm actually in a garage. The garage door is open right now. And I have a small fan that does move air from the closed side of the garage through to the open side to help keep air moving and ventilate my workspace. The smoke off of wood is not quite as concerning. It's, it can be rough if you're working on plywood and you're getting into burning and melting the glue. But if you get into lasering off powder coating or paint on metal products, you're going to be putting off some really noxious fumes. It's the same reason you don't want to cut vinyl with a laser engraver. It off gases some really nasty chemicals. 
some really harsh gases, those are going to, if you breathe them in, cause a lot of harm to you. And with vinyl specifically, some of the off-gassing is actually corrosive and can cause damage to your new laser that you've purchased. So please be sure to read up on the safety side of the materials that you're working with. I'm sorry, I thought this was America. Make sure that you're not using anything that's unsafe for the machine that you're using or unsafe for you to be around. And if it is, take extra precautions. Maybe run the machine outside. Make sure you have ample ventilation. Or the best thing that you could do would actually be to build an enclosure or purchase one for the machine to be in with fume extraction. So that way you're extracting the fumes out and away from your machine, out of your enclosed environment. If you can't meet those requirements with air filtration or open space, the timing might not be right for you to go down the route of laser engraving or laser cutting. But seeing as I have the means to make my work area as safe as possible, I'm gonna keep having fun with the lasers. The Ray 5 comes unassembled as a kit. And when you unbox the machine, you do have to assemble the side panels, add the feet, a little bit of wire management, install the actual laser diode. Overall, it's not that hard. It doesn't take a long time to do, and it's a really fun process. One piece of advice that I have for you when you're assembling this machine is you have to run the belts manually. Don't cut the belts all the way off because you're going to manually tighten the belts using T-nuts, and you'll have to still be able to grip them to add tension as your belts loosen up through wear and tear. It took less than half an hour, and I messed up because I didn't follow the instructions. Which, speaking of the instructions, longer does include a fairly nice, albeit kind of limited, instruction manual. It folds out and the images are in color. You get your full list of everything that's included. So in the box, you're going to get your laser engraver, a baggie of tools, a printing cable, which is a USB type B. Now you might notice this little black dongle in the end. That's because I'm using a MacBook to run my machine and I only have USB type C ports. The cable that it comes with is USB type B to USB type A. So I have to use a dongle. Thanks, Apple. You took away my USB ports so Belkin can sell it back. If you want to prepare files to use the micro SD slot, Longer does include this adapter. I will say I would recommend purchasing your own. This one didn't fit quite right in my USB dongle. That could be because it's a dongle. I'm not quite sure. It's the entire outside is a hard plastic. So I actually had to shave some plastic off of this. Not the end of the world. I, again, I prefer to use the tethered feature and we'll be testing out the wireless options on this machine in an upcoming video. So make sure you are subscribed for that one. Our analytics are showing that about 89% of the viewers aren't subscribed and we're on the road to 500 right now. Part of the reason that we're able to make videos like this one where companies have sent us products for testing, using, and showing off to all of you folks is because of the subscribers. We're on the road, we're growing, so make sure you hit that like button, ring the bell, and share this video with a friend so that way you can stay informed on what we have going on and the channel grows. So that way we can keep doing bigger and bigger and more exciting things. We have some really cool stuff in the pipelines and I don't want you to miss out on that. In terms of after sales service, Longer does give you a seven day return period when you can return the machine to them if anything is defective. They have a pretty active Facebook group for this machine as well, which I will have that linked in the description below. It's actually one that is operated and moderated by Longer, so they are involved, they know what's going on. I do enjoy seeing companies be involved in these groups. And if you need help beyond what you can find in the Facebook group, you can always email Longer at support at longer3d.com. And that's going to be right here on the bottom of the screen. So we've talked a bit about safety. We've talked about what my unboxing experience was kind of like. I had a fun time building it. Let's take a look at some of the things that I've gone off and engraved. The first couple of engravings that I did were actually test engraves directly from Longer. These were found on the micro SD card on the included basswood samples they gave. And overall, I'm pretty happy with the results. The little owls turned out super good and the compass is fantastic. If I were any more basic, I would get one of those tattooed but I've already got an owl tattoo, so longer, I'm not tattooing that one. Now that I'm taking a break from letting the intrusive thoughts in, let's take a look at some hardwood. So I have this walnut off scrap from a past project that I've done, and I'm thoroughly impressed. It does a great job. I also went ahead and tested out aluminum, which I spray painted. And as you can see, there's nothing on here. And that's because my little 10 watt laser didn't quite mark even with the paint as a masking layer. If I would have left the paint on, it would have looked great. I could have cleaned it up using Dawn dish soap and a magic eraser, but I wanted to see if the etch actually stuck through on the bare metal. It did not. Again, a diode laser is not the right choice for every project. They're not designed to mark aluminum or steel. 
For something like engraving on aluminum or steel, you'd be better off with a really high power laser or something like a fiber laser. This one's just not gonna do the trick, but you can mask things off and burn the paint away for a really precise, really clean image. I also went ahead and tried a piece of clear acrylic. Like I said a little bit earlier on in the video, clear acrylic is not able to be marked on or cut natively by a diode laser. However, there are some tricks that you can do. You can try painting the underside black with something like tempura paint or basic acrylic paint. I've seen people do some really awesome clear acrylic engravings using one of those masking techniques and that's something that I would like to experiment with to be able to show you guys how to do. In one of my more ridiculous ideas I decided to try to make custom toast. I do not recommend. Absolutely zero out of ten. Do not try to laser etch toast with a machine like this. It turned out really really nicely. However I had a couple of problems. Number one when you're engraving the bread it smells horrendous. Now that might be because I was using white bread and white bread contains a lot of sugar. So I might have been doing a lot of sugar burning. I don't know. I'm not a bread scientist. If you are a yeastiologist, hit me up and let me know. But the engraving did turn out really nicely. And then towards the end, what actually happened was there was so much smoke because I did two passes because I wanted it to be really clean. The, uh, the smoke detection alarm on this little guy kicked on and it stopped running, which I'm actually really happy about. No, I wasn't in danger of my bread catching on fire. However, the machine did go into a state where it was able to stop something from happening and protect itself, which is very nice, especially for somebody who doesn't have a lot of experience with lasers. I've only ever used one that is really handholdy. I have an X-Tool D1 in addition to my new longer here, and I really like the fact that this has a safety feature like that where it'll stop running. Between that and the fireproof acrylic, that does mean that the machine is in a pretty well protected state, and you should be able to get to it quickly because you should never use a laser engraver unsupervised. This isn't like a 3D printer where you start and go to bed. These do pose a serious risk of fire or bodily harm, so you need to be very safe. Let's talk about the software. How do you control this laser? There are two pieces of software that work really well. You can use Laser Gerbil, which is a free program for Windows users. Or if you're like me and not using Windows, your option is a program called Lightburn. Lightburn is kind of the industry standard for laser machines, and there's a lot of control that you have in it. You can do things like program tests, you can save different laser parameters, and it's a really simple UI. You can interact with it in a really simple manner. You can also print directly from the program using a tethered USB connection. And that's really, really nice. I am still getting acquainted with Lightburn. It's a bit tumultuous right now. We're not seeing eye to eye, but nobody's sleeping on the couch just yet. It's been a pretty decent experience so far, and I hope that as I gain more experience with my longer, I will gain more experience with the light burn and be able to do more cool things with it. If you're somebody new to your laser engraving journey and you're looking to get started, the Longer Ray 5 is a really solid choice. I can actually recommend this machine and that's not just because I have an affiliate link in the description. I've actually been thoroughly enjoying my time with this machine and will be doing some more videos with it. On Longer 3D's website, the normal price of the Ray 5 10 watt is $599 US. And for a laser that is made with aluminum extrusion and has a nice screen to interact with, I think that $599 is a reasonable price. Right now, as of the time of recording, it's actually on sale for $399, which is an even better price. If you get into designing with a laser machine, you actually stand a chance to make a lot of money. Craft shows and craft fairs are perfect opportunities. A 10 watt machine, being able to customize things like charcuterie boards or cutting boards or tumblers with a rotary attachment are all really fantastic things that you can do to make some money with a home grade laser engraver. I've made a load of money with my other laser and I hope to be able to make some with my Ray 5. I have no doubt the machine's capable of it. There's a lot of upgrades for this machine as well. You can get a honeycomb working table, which is actually really nice for improving your cuts if you were cutting out some ply. You can get a rail extension and make it bigger so you could do some crazy stuff. Like if you want to do, I don't know, laser engrave a surfboard and hang it on the wall. You can get an air assist, which by the way, Longer did include with this machine for me and we'll be doing a video of hooking up the air assist so I can show you what benefits you get with an air assist. Basically, it's like an 
aquarium pump that pushes air through a tube through the nozzle and it pushes air down and helps to prevent burning. So it's actually going to reduce scorch marks and make your cuts cleaner. It reduces burning by forcing air over top and it's a pretty high pressure airstream. Longer also has an enclosure that you can add to make sure that your fumes are being ventilated properly with a fan and you're getting them out of your working environment. You don't want to breathe what comes off of your work pieces. If you're really having fun with the laser and you find that 10 watts just isn't quite enough, you can upgrade to a 20 watt laser module and up your power. It's gonna let you cut faster. It would let you cut thicker. You can even cut through hardwoods with a 20 watt diode laser. At this point, what I wanna know is, what kind of projects do you wanna see us do with the longer Ray 5? I think that this is a really robust laser platform that they clearly put some time and energy into. And we'll dive a little bit deeper and talk about some of the other specifications of the machine as time goes on. If you're interested in seeing us do some projects with this, let me know what you'd like to see. I want your help to come up with some really cool video topics. And if you're the one that's responsible for an idea that we use the machine for, I'll make sure to give you a shout out on screen and thank you for your contribution to the channel. Overall, I think that the longer Ray 5 is a pretty cool budget-friendly machine. And if I were in the market for a new laser, this is one that I would strongly consider picking up. It's got some pretty good features, but it's also basic enough that anybody can pick it up and use it with just a little bit of practice. The hardest part's honestly going to be learning how the software works. Using and setting up the machine is really straightforward. Once you're comfortable with light burner laser gerbil, you're off to the races. You can use this machine to make all sorts of fun custom projects to either enhance your living space, give some great gifts, or make a load of money at your next local craft fair. Are you interested in picking up a longer K5? Let me know in the comments below.